just given a sketch, Weldman sketch trash version. So this is built in 2015, just in case we have any Mac users on 2015. Okay? And it says it will be converted once saved. Not a problem. If this was a 2017 file, since I'm running 2016, I could open it. But since it's a 2015 file, I can open it in 2016. Okay. What is a Weldman? Anybody have experience with Weldmans? Let's get started. You've already got a sketch, and you've got a drawing that tells you what each of the structural members is supposed to be. So down at the ends, um, we've got the, the squares here are all square, two by two inch uh, by quarter inch wall tubing on both ends. But then uh, one of your braces is uh, square tubing and one is angle iron, okay? And there's a little complexity here with the angle iron. Um, you've got two by four inch, um, quarter inch wall rectangular tubing on this side, and then you've got C channel on the other side and some more square tubing. You've also got um, some gussets. Does anybody know what a gusset does? Those little plates are called gussets. This is, this is a very commonly used um, component in mechanical design. What does a gusset do? It's not for screws, because this is going to be welded in. It reinforces the joint. So, you know, something that's like this, um, you know, depending on the forces you're applying, it, it can want to do this. So you're actually providing additional additional uh, support there at the joint. Um, so now you know what a gusset is. I Nobody ever knows what a gusset is, but once you get out in the industry, uh, somebody will say gusset, now you don't have to ask. Uh, the other thing is the way that these ends are mitered, so they're cut on a 45 degree, but these ends are done on what's called a, a, a butt end butt. So there are no cuts on the ends, um, but you've got open tubing, so you've got some caps that you have to weld on there. And there are different styles and reasons to do a mitered uh, cut versus an, an end butt, but you'll see both of those in, um, in, in structural situations. Okay, so let's start throwing some of this stuff in there so that you understand what's going on. And I'm gonna orient this to the way that the drawing is so that I don't get confused. Okay, so structural member, ANSI inch. First thing I'm gonna do is our square tube and um, two by two by quarter inch wall. And all I do here is select those lines and it pops everything in so nicely. And on this end, we actually run the miter cut. You can see that it's giving me an end butt configuration. So we're gonna apply a miter cut corner treatment there. And that is literally all I have to do. So not so bad. So down here, I know that I have the same thing on actually all of these pieces. Uh, and that one it's not gonna let me put in, I'll have to put in that separately. Um, but this one I have an end butt, and if we do one versus the other, you look at your drawing, you're supposed to have a cap here. Um, so it's just reversing the way that it's uh, putting those together. So you actually need the middle one, okay? You've got some gapping options here as well. But you can see that those are all butting up against one another. We've got the cuts that are already made in here. I didn't have to do anything else there. Now on this end, we know that we have that same size tubing, okay? But look at the preview. Are we actually gonna have our tubing doing that? Currently it's intersecting these other guys, okay? So we have to go ahead and trim it. And that's pretty easy as well. So I can trim extend. I select the body to be trimmed. Uh, in other parts of SolidWorks, we recognize things as features or faces. These structural members are recognized as bodies. So body to be trimmed. And then it wants to know what are my trimming boundaries? What faces or planes am I trimming by? So on the square tubing, you've got a rounded corner. All of your structural steel, and if it's formed, it has uh, radii. It does not have sharp corners. 
So I actually need to select these two bounding faces, okay? And now it's telling me what do you want to keep, what do you want to get rid of? And basically, everything that we want to keep is in the middle. And you can experiment with this, but if you click on those, um, we basically are discarding all these pieces then that turn to a really light shadowed yellow, okay? So you can see there are some gaps there, and that's just by nature of the sizing in the corner. Um, when we welded this together, we would fill all of that in with weld, okay? And you'll do the same thing on the other side. All right. On this side, we've got angle iron. Ansi inch as well, angle iron. And the size is, let's see. Two by two by eighth inch wall angle. And I'm going to put it in um, and then we're going to come back to it on, on something else. Okay, some options you've got here. It's not, um, you actually want one of these sides to be flush with the outside. And so you've got some options for alignment. So I don't know if I go 45 degrees, that's not the right way. So what do we say, 315? Okay, so that gets me, that wall is parallel now to this outside face, but Jennifer <coughs> actually wants it to be flush. So I'm gonna show you on the um, other tubing how you move the profile of uh, the, the basically the cross-sectional sketch, you, you can move that around in order to align it um, to one side or the other. Okay. But for the moment, um, you would, we would line this up and then we would come and we would do the same kind of trim on both ends that we did with the uh, square tubing on the other side. Any questions about that? So you're basically adding these in and then you've got a bunch of uh, locating to do and then uh, some trimming to do. All right, on this side, we've got rectangular tubing. So let's put that in. Hold on, just a quick yeah. question on the angle. Uh-huh. Um, it looks like from the sketch that the angle line is actually not only flush with the front face, but it's centered in mm -hmm. the joint. How would you do that? I'm going to show you that. Okay. If you put a point basically in and you align off of that point, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to do rectangular tube here, and I think we're two by four by quarter inch wall. And we're going to select this guy. And uh, so we're pretty happy there. We can go ahead and trim at our ends. So body to be trimmed, and the face we're trimming to is right here. And we're keeping the middle, discarding the outside. That's pretty happy there. I'm gonna come down to this end, do the same thing. Trim this body, that face. Keep the middle, discard the end. Okay, but you can see this top piece is not sitting where we need it to. It actually is supposed to sit flush, so this, this face and the top face of the square tubing are supposed to be coincident, all right? So, like I said, in here, when you're putting these in, there's something called a locate profile, okay? And we're gonna look at this cross-sectional sketch that, was, that, that defines um, that structural member, but um, we're gonna modify, and it's locating off of a point that exists right here, and it's basically aligning that point with our sketch line. We're gonna put a point right here, and then it's gonna align that point now with this sketch line, which is gonna drop the whole thing down, okay? But that can't be done in, in the uh, feature. It has to be done in the sketch that defines the feature. So we're going to go drop down into that structural member, we're going to edit that sketch, and we're going to put, and you can see all the constraints that are in there, pretty happy stuff, but there's a point right there. So we're going to add another sketch point, okay, and we're
we're going to add it coincident to that center line. And then we can dimension that, and it needs to be one inch above. All right, so now I've got a point, and you can see it's fully defined, it's coincident, <coughs> and uh, its height is defined. So I'm going to exit that, and now I can go back into that feature. I can edit it, and I can do locate profile, okay? And I can select my new point. So it gets a little more complicated for the C channel because you've got to do your math to figure out if I'm moving it around in two directions. You've got to make sure you get your point on the right side with the right dimensions. Um, but it should be just a little bit of playing or you can work out the math in your head. So what I would suggest is now that you've moved this and you've trimmed it, I would mirror this to the other side uh, rather than, but if you want the practice, do them both separately. Um, because you've got your top plane, Jennifer built the sketch around it. But just know that if I go to my features and I mirror this, I can select my top plane. And then if I try to select features to mirror, it's, it's not going to let me select the whole body. I need bodies to mirror, okay? And um, if I try to select here, it will not let me select out of the feature tree. Um, once you trim and it, trim or extend it, it, it identifies more with the trim for whatever reason. So I can select it from the window, um, not out of the model tree, okay? So now that one is, should be, since I mirrored it, exactly flush, okay? Let me show you um, the C channel. The gussets and the end caps real quick. Okay, so C channel, the only thing special about C channel is the size. The size that she gives you is four by 5.4. So it's four inches. Um, it's not four inches square, but I think it's this dimension that's four inches. The 5.4 is pounds per foot. So since C-channel doesn't have a, a, a uniform thickness, they define the thickness by a pounds per foot. So 5.4 is just pounds per foot. Um, just note that you need to have this, uh, you can mirror your profile about the vertical axis, but you still have a flush problem. You have a flush problem from inside to outside and top to bottom. So the point that you define is gonna have to be moving in two different directions from the center point in this sketch, okay? And if you go into that one, you can open that sketch as well, and you should be able to find your point in here. There it is, it's right, it should be right at the origin for the sketch, okay? And so you're gonna have to locate a point in to some extent and up to some extent, so your point that you create will be somewhere in this area. And then when you align it here, it's gonna drop it over and down. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, last thing, end caps, pretty easy. You've got some options here, but basically you choose the surface you wanna put an end cap on. Uh, you can define where it actually puts the thickness. So um, you can build it completely to the inside, uh, overlapping to some extent. Uh, you can change the thickness of the uh, plate itself. You can change the <coughs> offset. You've got an offset on there. Uh, you've got a corner treatment as well, so you can use a chamfer or a fillet and define the size of that chamfer or fillet. And Jennifer gives you that information. Okay, so they're pretty easy to put in. Gussets are pretty easy to put in as well. I wouldn't do any of these until you're done. But your gusset, you just choose your supporting faces. So basically, what walls am I, am I bounding this or binding it to? And then you've got some options here um, for just a diagonal and then a different profile, triangular or diagonal. 
got some options for dimensions here. We've got some, like I can change this to 15 degrees. Start making it look pretty funky. That's not a real effective gusset there. Um, you can change where it's adding your thickness to the top, to the bottom, um, the thickness as well. And you've got some options on your location too. And basically it's going off of this, these edges to define whether it puts it in the bottom or the middle. Okay? And you've got an option to change to change those uh, those things as well. Okay, so little little options to play with there. Gussets and end caps should go pretty quickly. I think you'll end up spending the most time on trimming and then re relocating your angle and your um, your your mid bars. These are all tubing, two by two tubing. Um, they should be okay on center. I don't think you have to move those. You might, and then you're just got to trim your ends. Okay? I probably put these. One of the last things I do would be these these supports. Any questions? All right. Great. So Caleb, uh, not Caleb. Daniel is here. I've got Caleb on the brain today. Daniel is here and. Uh, so if you have any